What's happening? It's your boy Lil John. Right now, you're turning up on MrTalaferro.com, shawty. Yeah! All right, we are back again with the Mr. Telefero Show. Got to thank you for your time this week. Malcolm, how you doing, man? Alfred, it's good to be here, sir. Spring break. Spring break. All right around the corner, man. I and mean, I'm happy, you know, need yes, a break, sir. could yes, use a break. Sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's good to be here, though. A lot has went on this week, Malcolm. It has. It has. Action-packed show for you guys, as usual. Today, we have Cam Sutton joining us. We caught up with Cam earlier in the week, and he opened up about a multitude of things. We'll also talk Oscars with Queen Jack. Um, she'll give you a couple Oscar nominees and awards that she thought yeah. should have been in the, in the award show itself. Now, let's get started with our show. Let's talk national sports. Saturday night, Saturday night we probably watched one of the best games of our lifetime when the Golden State Warriors stayed hot defeating the Oklahoma City Thunder. This game was so good, we decided to give you the highlight ourselves. A little over two minutes ago, in the third is Curry right now with a fadeaway three in the corner. Golden State down two. Still in the third is Curry with the crossover. Oh the step back three, mm. he buries it. Eight ball. Mm. Golden mm. State takes the lead. Now it's Durant with the three of his own. OKC back on top. Now let's keep it rolling. It's Durant one more time. Look at that step back and just how he just crosses over the Sick I mean, three. It's disgusting. Fast forward to the end of regulation after the Klay Thompson layup. Westbrook in inbound the ball to Durant. Durant's trapped. All you got to do is hold on to the ball right there, Malcolm. Uh, Game's over. Like it literally would have been over. It would Get, have been over. Draymond Green gives it to Klay. Klay up to Iguodala. And Durant mm. fouls Iguodala. Not only does he foul out of the game, Iguodala will go to the line, make both free throws. We will head to overtime. In overtime. See down three. Oh my gosh, Malcolm. Woo! It's that man again. Oh my gosh. For three. Tied at 110. Let's keep it moving. Draymond Green oh, over to Clay. Picks it out. Mm. Buries the three. Keep it going. Now it's Draymond Green. One more time. He'll find Clay. Wide open cut. Wide open. Clay and the foul. We're tied again. And then this happens. Westbrook on the drive. Falling away. Won't go. Rebound taken by Igadala. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining. So, Malcolm, we can look at this from both ends of the perspective. Yes, sir. Big win for Golden State. Yes, sir. Demoralizing loss for Oklahoma City. Let's start with Steph. Is he in the midst of the best season ever? Steph is having a fantastic season. Uh, just from, you know, the, the shot chart, from, you know, his defense to his, you know, passing of the ball. And I just really feel that Steph is having a great season. But I'm not going to forget about 2012 LeBron James. I'm not going to do that. I refuse. So I, I'm sorry. I just can't put LeBron in the midst. I love LeBron in the visual. Now, if you want to give me who's had – more great seasons, I'll give you that, but I can't say LeBron had one of those great seasons. Now, Michael Jordan, maybe one of his okay. 35 okay. We can, point we can seasons. can put 95. Yeah, 95 90, is yeah. somewhere around there. I'll give you Michael Jordan. Okay. Even Kobe Bryant, one of those seasons, I know he went for 81 one of those yeah. seasons. And then also he had a stretch of like 10 plus 40 point games at one point, yeah. I think in 2008. I can't give you LeBron though. Uh. I think this might be the best season, period. I think, Steph, what he's doing it, right now, that shot alone, Malcolm? Yes, yes. That shot? Oh, my God. It was really up there. And just, I mean, he's really made everyone around him better, from Clay uh -huh. to Draymond, even Harrison Barnes. Yes. That team looks like it cannot be beat. Malcolm, Harrison Barnes is going to get a max contract this offseason. Somewhere. Season, somewhere. Somewhere. Because of what Steph Curry is able to do and how he's able to incorporate his teammates. And you, you would think somebody at six feet, there's no way he can impact every spot on the court. But this guy's doing it, Malcolm. He's really showing yeah. us that you can impact everyone on the court, even at six feet. Yeah, and with Harrison Barnes leaving, that might open up the uh, the window for a, a Kevin Durant to maybe leave OKC. Let's but not tease we don't we don't that. we don't have that type of <laughs> that type of time to go into hypotheticals. But I just I know that it was such a good game. Just for the West. It was such a good game. You brought up Kevin Durant. Let's stay right there and talk about OKC. All right, let's look at OKC. They gave it everything they mm -hmm. had. Is it safe to say they're just not good enough, Malcolm, to compete with a team of the caliber of OKC, of Golden State? I mean, their kryptonite is truly their best player. Right. And this is going to sound... Who is their best player? Russell Westbrook oh is their God. best player. 
Russell like Westbrook that. has taken over Kevin Durant as their best player. He wasn't supposed to, okay. you know, but the most athletic player on that team, pound for pound, is Russell Westbrook. And, uh, you know, I love Kevin Durant. I love his game. And two years ago, Kevin Durant was the best player in basketball. But this isn't 2014 anymore. Well, I'll say this, Malcolm. Um, they don't defend. They, they don't defend. They don't, they don't take pride do in defense not. anymore. Ubaka has taken a step backwards. <laughs> I, I, they don't defend. And I'll, we, I, thought we talk, I think we talked about this last week. I think the problem is when Durant and, and Westbrook, they pass it to mm -hmm. each other. It's the other 10 guys on the court that yeah. they don't trust. Right. And that is a problem going forward. I don't right. see how they're going to be any of the elite teams going forward. It's just it's rough right now to be in Oklahoma City. They're not winning any of the big games. They're not. And we thought it was Scott Brooks, remember? You know, we thought he was the problem, that his offensive play calling was the problem. Yeah. Now, Billy Donovan steps in from the University of Florida, and it's the exact same problem. You have just two-man ball uh -huh. with KD and Westbrook. And then, you know, Serge Ibaka might – pull up, you know, he might do something effective, but it's just not happening. It's kind of that dynamic, Malcolm, of, I mean, the players trump the coaches. Mm -hmm. Exactly. At the end of the day, that personality, Durant and Westbrook, obviously Westbrook has a really high personality. He's really big and really demonstrative. It's kind of just the players. You just brought up Billy Donovan coaching that team. I kind of forgot that he was even the coach of that team. Yeah. We only talk about the players with yeah. that team, and that's probably not a good thing. Exactly. And, I mean, as you said, you forgot. It took a clip for me to realize, wow, Billy Donovan actually left Florida. Yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't even – I haven't heard interviews from Billy Donovan. All I've heard is, KD, we lost. You know, Russell, um, it was, you know, a combination of things. No, it was Russell Westbrook that is turning the ball over yeah. and, you know, causing this, this chaos for this team right now. All right, Malcolm, I think we've talked enough yeah. about the NBA. Now, we're going to swing it over to college after this commercial break. We come back, we're going to kick with one of the biggest playmakers in college football. His name is Cam Sutton. We'll be back after this. Basically where we are is a couple a day is what we average out to. You can't stop it. It's, you know you're hurting your child. You know you're doing this to them, but yet you're still gonna go out and get that other pill. You gotta thank you for taking the time out. I know we pretty crunched in. Yeah, yeah, we got the highly questionable type thing going on, but I got to thank you for coming through. Cam, now, now, first and foremost, my first question for you, just can you tell us how you got into the game of football? How, how did we get going? Uh, it's just something I started as a kid. Um, I've been playing sports since I was four years old. So um, year round, I've been ripping and running, you know, not just with football, but basketball and baseball as well. And it's just been a nonstop, you know, thing since, since youth. And... Um, Fell in love with it. You know, I was one of those kids that didn't even play with toys. I was one of the ones running around with footballs and <laughs> basketballs and, you know, bats and stuff like that. So um, just the, the love for the game and interest for the game always been there. That's what's up. So you were telling me you were from Louisiana, but you uh, moved to Georgia after the hurricane happened. So uh, could you elaborate on, you know, there's a lot of kids that look up to you, you know, from Georgia to Tennessee, Florida, ETC. So, like, what would you tell a kid right now that's in Jonesboro right now, just grinding, you know, wanting to get out the city? What would you tell them? Keep the faith. And, I mean, that's the easiest thing to say um, because it, it relates to any kid, you know, not just from Jonesboro, but, you know, everybody has their own struggle. You know, everybody goes through their own phases and, you know, and have to overcome something throughout life. And, um, you know, just growing up in Jonesboro, um, you know, that's something you see each and every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can say the same for, like I said, for other different other, other different places. Um, but firsthand in Jonesboro, it's just a lot going on. And we don't have a lot of people making out of Jonesboro. Yeah. You know, if just from my high school, you know, we had Tony and Harry Douglas. Yep. You know, they played basketball and football. football. Um, you know, but that, that's that's pretty much it. And outside of that, you know, we just got, you know, kids trying to make weight. Yeah. Um, whether it's with sports or, you know, anything else they want to become in life. And... You know, faith is only going to take it as far as, you know, as you let it. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, preaching that faith, you know, to even to the kids I talk to now back home and, you know, people from my high school I talk to, uh, that's a big thing with me. And, um, you know, I just try to relay the same thing to them. Can you explain the awareness? What did you do as a kid? I mean, it's just you just have a natural knack for the football. I mean, you just make plays on the ball. Can you explain, like, some of the drills you might have did when you were younger, how you get your feet so quick, just how you got it going? 
Um, you know, a lot of that come with, you know, training and, um, you know, going different places here and there. And then, like I said, just feeding off of different sports. So, um, you know, with football, you know, you got your hand-eye coordination. You know, that, that relates to basketball and baseball as well. Um, you know, with baseball, you got tracking the ball in the air. You know, that's just like football when you're going up, you know, to defend a pass or go up for a pick or anything like that. Um, basketball, you know, defensive-wise, you know, you're moving your feet. You know, you're going left and right. Um, you're guarding, you know, you know, a different player, another athlete or so. Um, that's agility right there, you know what I mean? You're going back and forth with that. So it all tied hand in hand. And then just my repetition and practice, like I said, um, doing this since I was four years old, just countless reps, you know, staying after, you know, practice or on my downtime, you know, making it muscle memory, you know, something I can do. And, and it might not be a lot. I might not be, need to be running around anywhere. But, you know, something stationary where I'm just working on, you know, a certain technique, you know, working on my hands, working on my feet, you know, the mental game. You always got watching film, you know, that, that takes you a long way itself outside of just, you know, the physical part, you know, the physical aspect of the game. And um, I've just been doing that, you know, like I said, for a long time, and it's got me to where I am now. Yeah. Now, with all this, you know, your work ethic and, you know, just what you've been doing off and on the field, you know, I want to stay on the field and talk about you in high school. And mm -hmm. you were rated as a three-star, you know, coming out of high school. What, mm -hmm. you know, we see now, you know, you have developed into quite the prospect, you know, yeah. for, you know, college and the NFL. So what do you have to say to those that, you know, kind of doubted you a little bit coming out? Stars don't mean nothing. You know, that's, <laughs> that's just my mentality, you know. And I have, you know, kids hit me up now. I was like, hey, man, I'm a two-star. You know, hey, man, I'm three-star. What I need to do? And, you know, like I said, I always keep the same message. You know, stars don't mean nothing. It's just something that you want and you got to go get. And, you know, I think a big thing with that, too, you know, with the stars and, you know, getting exposure and things mm -hmm. like that, I didn't really have time for that. You know, I was school and then going from sport to sport, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't really doing a lot of camps and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So it was just really just getting on my own and, you know, whatever I do, whatever I do through the season, that's just what I got to go off of. So, and like I said, the the ratings and you know all that, that's just paper. You know, the yeah. game the game not played on paper. So, you know, you got you got to line up in front of me each and every play. Each and every you know, play. And, you know, show me you better than me. Yeah. And that's just my mindset every time I step out there on the field. And um, what I try to preach to everybody else out there with me. Position of meteorites and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. My favorite part about being a Vol and being a part of the Vol family is that we're one Tennessee. Being from Tennessee and being able to go to school at the University of Tennessee was an honor for me. My scholarship means so much to me. It's really a blessing. My message to the Tennessee Fund donors would be just to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me and my teammates. Vol fans, there's one penalty that is not reviewable. Where's your orange? It's Friday. And you're not wearing orange. You gonna really come out here with no orange on? Do not forget to support your Vols by wearing your orange on Fridays. You got to be kidding me. Show us your orange and avoid getting a penalty flag thrown your way on Big Orange Friday. Now I'm going to bring up three games, Cam. We're going to kind of go from bad, good to best. Now, I want you to give me, in, in one word or a couple words, can you give me your feeling after each of these games um, last season, after the heartbreaking loss to Florida? Um, you know, disappointment. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's different parts of the game. You can, you know, it's never one thing you can just key on. It's just like, man, that's, that's the determining factor. Uh, but we always talk about in the program, um, you know, the little inches, the little small things and the details. Um, throughout the course of the game that build up to, you know, being so close to making that play or, mm -hmm. or so close to getting that break. And, you know, it's, it's something that you learn from. Um, like obviously, we had a, a great season. Um, you know, moving, from, moving forward from that point, 
Uh, it's just something that we build off of, and we come closer together. You know, tough losses like that can either make a team or break a team. And, um, you know, guys in the program didn't hang their head. You know, obviously we want, want to be on the winning end, you know. Uh, but moving forward from that, you know, we bonded, we came together, and we were able to have a you know, successful year. After Georgia, after that big win, the season was kind of up in the air at yeah, that yeah. point, and y'all knocked off the biggest win of y'all season at, at that point. How was the what was the feeling like after Georgia? Excitement, you know, excitement and, and you know, just a blessing. Um, first of all, any opportunity being out there is a blessing anyway. So um, just to be able to play the game. But uh, from my my standpoint, you know, being in Georgia for a while, is, you know, I hear the talk about Georgia, Tennessee all the time, and you know, I got a lot of friends who you know, like Georgia or, you know, or the athletics. Uh, so just from that standpoint, um, being Georgia is always good. Um, you know, but just for the university and, you know, team standpoint, um, I think that was our turning point of our season. Uh, you know, a big win like that definitely, you know, swings a lot of momentum on the season and a lot of momentum on the team. And just something that we built off of and, you know, carry with us for the rest of the season. And your biggest win of the season and then your, your bowl win against Northwestern. Can you give me that feeling after that one? You know, accomplishment, you know, uh, sending our seniors off on a great note. You know, uh, we all talk about with the bowl experiences, you won't, mirror, you won't remember the week, but you always remember the game, you know, winning or losing the game. And just sending them out on a positive note. Um, and then for the returning players, you know, just – something that we can, you know, piggyback off on until the next season. So getting ready for this season, uh, we talk about being 1-0, you know, with the bowl game coming into the near. Uh, we had the mindset that we're 1-0. Um, you know, we're going forward uh, from that point, you know, and, and make the most of our season. And, and you know, for our seniors, um, send them off on a great notice. Well. Basically where we are is a couple a day is what we average out to. You can't stop it. It's you know you're hurting your child. You know you're doing this to them, but yet you're still gonna go out and get that other pill. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys know this, but Cam's cousin is Boosie. Could you tell me a little bit, Cam, about the impact Boosie has had on you? Uh, you know, just growing up with him and, that, and our family, I'm always having him around, you know, always having him in my corner, you know, um, an outlet, you know, to my life. Um, you know, different little knowledge, different little pieces um, that just helped me and made me a better person. And, you know, obviously he's had his ups and downs throughout his life. So, you know, I mean, you learn from that. And um, like I said, just the experience that I've had with him, um, he's been, you know, another father figure you know, to me, you know, to my family, you know, and, I, and like I said, always an outlet to me um, whenever I need to talk to him. Now, with with Boosie's music, he's got to be at the top of your list as far as, I mean, nobody can ever surpass Cuz. Can you tell me about a crazy show you've been to of Boosie's? Like, just a crazy experience at a Boosie show or anything that comes to mind off the top? Because, you know, we got them crazy fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the most recent one I went to was uh, last year. He was here, actually. You know, me perform here. I uh, went to that. Um, got got time to you know spend time with him. You know, in the hotel and things like that. Uh, that I don't get to get to do all the time. You know, I don't get really get to see him all the time. So um, it's either when I go home, I get try to get a time you know to see him then, or when I can make a show. Um, I try now to get him, you know, up here as much as possible, you know, but he obviously got his things going on, you know, with music and family as well. Uh, but that was my, my latest experience with, with him, um, with our sh the show he had up here. How's, How's he doing? doing? Just he's doing well, you know, uh, he's back on the road now, um, you know, still going through treatments, um, you know, still getting right, um, but, you know, spirit's still uplifted, you know, head still held high. Um, you know, he, he's always been that person, you know, to put, you know, the family, you know, before him. Now, in regards to music, something that Cam Sutton wants to show the world in 2016. Um, you know, my mentality, you know, who I am as a person, you know, my beliefs and what I stand by. Um, you know, people always, uh, you know, trying to, you know, pick at me or, you know, get into my mind of, you know, what drives me or, you 
know, what motivates me, what keeps me going. And, you know, I always talking about, you know, like I said, from where I came from, uh, my family, and, you know, what I want to achieve and what I want to do in my life. And, you know, that just keeps me level-headed, you know. And from my standpoint, uh, my role on the team this year has got to go to another level, you know. Never complacent with what we did in the past or my, my goals that I've achieved, you know, in the past. We always trying to, like I said, one-up um, each and every year, each and every game, each and every week. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got to keep that same mentality and, and preach that to everybody else on my team get them all on the same page. So what is something Cam plans to set off in 2016? You know, this is this the year, you know, you know this is the mark. Um, we try to go out with a bang, obviously, because I'm a senior this year. But I'm trying to go out with a bang, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, SC championships, you know, national championship, hopeful. So what's something that's trending right now in 2016 that you feel like has no juice, like you're just tired of it? <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's, it's so much going on and everybody has their unique style. You can never, you can never shadow or um, knock down anybody's, you know, style. Uh, but it, it's so much going on, you know, from social media and things like that. Uh, I really don't got specific, you know, you know, antique that got no juice, and uh, like I said, if, if, if it makes you and it's comfortable to you, you know, do it to your best ability. An aspect of your game that you you plan to approach like a man this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, you know, um, just everything, you know, with football and with life, you know. You, you, you're at that point now, or well, I'm at that point now, um, where I'm becoming a man, you know, I'm, I'm turning into a man, and, you know, if you want to be treated like we always talk about, if you want to be treated like a man, you know, you got to do the things that men that men do, and um, just feeding off of that, just whatever I do, my approach, um, it's, it's got to be top of the line, it's got to be, you know, um, I got to be on my A game with everything I do. Position of meteorites and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. My favorite part about being a Vol and being a part of Vol family is that we're one Tennessee. Being from Tennessee and being able to go to school at the University of Tennessee was an honor for me. My scholarship means so much to me, it's really a blessing. My message to the Tennessee Fund donors would be just to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Thank you so much, it really does mean a lot to me and my teammates. Ball fans, there's one penalty that is not reviewable. So where's your orange? It's Friday. And you're not wearing orange. You gonna really come out here with no orange on? Do not forget to support your balls by wearing your orange on Fridays. You got to be kidding me. Show us your orange and avoid getting a penalty flag thrown your way on Big Orange Friday. So enough about music and now more about stuff that you know, it's a little more juicy. Who did you spend Valentine's Day with? Uh, my parents, uh, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother. I'm just being around the family, um, you know, having a good time with them. You know, I don't get to see them as much now, obviously, because with school and football and things like that. But uh, just being around them is never a dull moment. Um, it's something you never take for granted. So you didn't have a date? No, nah, I have no date. <laughs> Are you interested in anybody right now? Um. I don't know, you know, I'm like I said, I'm you know, chill, laid back. Um, Is you know, there just anybody? Something that just fall in place or just, you know, that will come. Is nobody here at UT or do you have sort of like a, a distant lover? No, nah, I don't have a distant lover. Um, Are you looking for someone? Or are you just kind of waiting for like the right time? Yeah, like the right this? time, right time. Um, you know, you can never rush that, something like that um, because if, if it's there, it may happen. Um, but like I'm, I'm at the age now where 
I'm not just really looking for, you know, a girlfriend or, you know, somebody just to be around for a little while, you know. I'm, You're looking for, like, longevity? Yeah, you know, it's, it's time to, you know, look for stuff on down the road. I'm about to be 21, and I'm moving forward, so I don't really have time to just be, you know, looking for a little girlfriend here and there and um, dealing with that. So, let's say a girl slides into your DMs. Okay. <laughs> How do you feel about girls sliding into your DMs? How do you feel about girls approaching you first? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because it's, it's male or, or female. If it's something that they really want or, you know, it's something they're really trying to get to, they're going to they're gonna go after it. And um, I don't really, I don't see it as like a problem or anything like that. You don't automatically, let's say you get on Twitter, you get a new DM, you don't automatically label the girl as a groupie just because she approached you first? No, because maybe she not be, might not be able to approach me in person. You know, everybody's not an approachable person. Everybody can't talk to people in public. You know, it, it's, it's certain ways you go about talking to people or, or certain ways you go about approaching people. And, you know, that might be their way of, you know, approaching me or somebody approaching somebody else. Um, so if they have to do that, I mean, it's fine. Um, I guess I don't have a problem with it or see nothing wrong with it. Do the girls that do approach you, how do most girls choose to approach you? Uh, when I'm by myself um, or, you know, through social media because I'm so social media uh, heavy. Um, you know, they try to, like I said, DM and things like that or just small conversation. You know, that, that always takes, you know, people a long way. Um, with a small little conversation here and there. Um, you never know what that could lead to. And, um, you know, there's, there's people have approached me like that. So uh, that's just been the biggest thing of how they've been approaching me. When we come back, we talk Oscars with Queen Jet. You're watching the Mr. Talaferro Show. Basically, where we are is a couple a day is what we average out to. You can't stop it. It's, you know you're hurting your child. You know you're doing this to them, but yet you're still gonna go out and get that other pill. The Oscars, as we all know, is one of the most controversial award shows there is. Every year, someone we all feel deserves an award either doesn't get nominated, loses to an undeserving artist, or isn't even present at the awards. So we decided to do something different and create our own nominations. So for the first category, we have artists most likely for you to not understand their lyrics would definitely be Young Thug. Um, for the second category, we have artists most likely to go to Twitter jail, Kanye West. Artists most likely to tell you go love yourself, Justin Bieber. Songs most likely to get the club turned, I definitely agree, will be March Madness by Future. Um, artists most likely to make you realize that you deserve better, Bryson Tiller. And artists most likely to introduce herself, would be Adele. We have artists most likely to release a date and never actually release the album. I think all of us have definitely been waiting on Frank Ocean's album. We have artists most likely to convert from a full-time singer to a part-time singer and a full-time model. I think everybody has her Puma Creepers, I would say Rihanna. And we have artists most likely to ruin your career. Um, I definitely think this artist has your hotline blinging, so it would definitely be Drake. We have artists most likely to write a breakup song would definitely be Taylor Swift. I think she's been in more relationships than we even have categories for. Um, we have artists most likely to make you feel uncomfortable during a performance. And if you've been watching any recent award shows lately, I'm pretty sure Miley Cyrus has made everyone feel very uncomfortable. And last but not least, artists most likely to glow up is Sam Smith. I'm sure all of you all have seen the pictures of Sam Smith and you can definitely agree that he had the biggest glow up of 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for viewing the 2016 Oscars with Queen Jet, and we will be back for more with the Mr. Tyler Ferris Show in a few. Basically where we are is a couple a day is what we average out to.
you can't stop it. It's, you know you're hurting your child. You know you're doing this to them, but yet you're still gonna go out and get that other pill. First things first, Chris Rock at the Oscars was nothing short of controversial to say the least. You tell me what you think. These are some of the jokes and opinions Rock had. Next up is how corny us dudes are after relationships. Everyone knows about the love affair between Sage Gemini and Jordan Sparks, but did you know how salty the breakup has been? Check this out. Warning, there is bad language. Everything was horrible. I guess it was damn She got my nerves. I want to stab her. Like all the like, don't get me wrong. Like she cool. She level headed. You know, I finally got, I finally got like a big house like now. Okay. So you know, Jordan gave me seventy thousand dollars to put down on his house, whatever you know. So of course she's been here. I'm like, like, what do we do? Like, I say a joke and she don't laugh. And I'm like, bitch, I know I'm funny. Last but not least, the top thing to stick out with me is what we talked about earlier in the show. The shot heard round the world. Check it out one more time. Westbrook on the drive, falling away. Won't go. Rebound taken by Iguodala. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way down to Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! With six tenths of a second remaining. For my executive producer, Angela, associate producers, Jatan and Malcolm, the volunteers and journalism interns that made this happen, I got to thank you for making this show a success. Now, next week, we're going to do a tournament style edition with the Mr. Teleferro Show, and I want to leave you with the quote from Joseph Campbell. Find a place inside where there's joy, and the joy will burn out the pain. Thank you for watching the Mr. Telefero Show.